First day on the job, the journey of a new English teacher. Hi everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we have a very inspiring story to share with you. It's about the journey of a new English teacher starting their first day at school. That's right, Luther. It's a story that many of us can relate to or learn from, whether we're teachers, students, or anyone who's ever started something new. Let's dive into the story of Emma, the English teacher. Emma was both excited and nervous. It was her first day teaching at a local school. She prepared her lessons carefully, wanting to make a great first impression. When she arrived at school, she greeted by the principal, who showed her to her classroom. This is where you'll be shaping young minds, he said with a smile. Emma smiled back, feeling the weight and the honor of her new role. She arranged her desk, placed her books neatly, and waited for her students to arrive. The bell rang, and her students began to enter the classroom. She greeted each one with a warm smile, trying to remember their names. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ms. Emma, your new English teacher. I'm so excited to learn and grow with all of you this year, she began, her voice steady and welcoming. The students seemed curious and attentive. Emma started her lesson with a simple get-to-know-each-other activity, asking each student to share their name and one interesting fact about themselves. The class was filled with laughter and chatter as students shared their stories. Emma listened intently, making mental notes to remember each student's interests. As the class progressed, Emma introduced a short story. They discussed the plot, the characters, and the moral. Emma was impressed by the students' insights and creativity. By the end of the class, Emma felt a sense of accomplishment and connection with her students. She knew there would be challenges ahead, but she was ready to face them with enthusiasm and determination. Emma's story is a beautiful reminder of the impact teachers have on their students and the journey of growth they embark on together. Absolutely, Bianca. And to our viewers, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Have you ever started a new role or joined a new community? What was your experience like? Share your stories in the comments below. We believe everyone's story has something valuable to teach us. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you found Emma's story inspiring, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. Stay curious, stay inspired, and remember, every new beginning is a chance to make a difference. See you in the next video. Speak English with emotion. Easy ways to express happiness, sadness, and joy. Why is Luther sad today? Luther is sad because he lost his book. How does Fiona show her happiness? Fiona shows her happiness by smiling and laughing. What makes you feel joyful? Seeing my friends makes me feel joyful. Why was Luther happy on his birthday? Luther was happy because he received many gifts. Can a movie make Fiona feel sad? Yes, a sad movie can make Fiona feel sad. What does joy feel like? Joy feels like a warm, pleasant feeling in your heart. How does Luther celebrate his success? Luther celebrates by having a party with his friends. What brings happiness to Fiona? Playing music brings happiness to Fiona. Why do we feel sad sometimes? We feel sad when things don't go as we hoped. Can a good joke bring joy? Yes, a good joke can make people feel joyful. Why is Fiona excited about going to London? Fiona is excited because she loves traveling. What made Luther feel proud in Canada? Luther felt proud when he won a photography contest. 
Why do people feel happy when they help others? Helping others gives a sense of fulfillment and happiness. Can beautiful weather make you joyful? Yes, sunny and pleasant weather often makes people feel joyful. Why was Fiona sad about leaving Paris? Fiona was sad because she enjoyed her time there. How does Luther express his happiness? Luther expresses his happiness by singing. What makes children in Australia happy? Children in Australia are happy when they play outside. Can a surprise party make Fiona joyful? Yes, Fiona loves surprises and they make her joyful. Why do people feel sad when they say goodbye? People feel sad when they say goodbye because they will miss each other. What can bring happiness to someone who is feeling down? Kind words or a friendly gesture can bring happiness to someone who is feeling down. European Adventure, a beginner's guide to traveling Europe. Where is Owen going on vacation? Owen is going to France on vacation. What does Nancy like about Italy? Nancy likes the food and history in Italy. Can Owen speak Spanish for his trip to Spain? Owen is learning Spanish for his trip. How many countries are in Europe? There are 44 countries in Europe. Why does Nancy want to visit London? Nancy wants to see Big Ben in London. What should Owen pack for his trip to Norway? Owen should pack warm clothes for Norway. Is Paris famous for its museums? Yes, Paris is famous for the Louvre and other museums. Where can you find the Colosseum? The Colosseum is in Rome, Italy. Why is Venice unique? Venice is unique because it has canals instead of roads. What currency does Owen need in Germany? Owen needs euros in Germany. Does Nancy need a visa for Ireland? Nancy doesn't need a visa for Ireland if she's from the EU. What language do they speak in Sweden? They speak Swedish in Sweden. Is Switzerland known for its mountains? Yes, Switzerland has the Alps. What's a traditional dish in Greece? A traditional dish in Greece is moussaka. Can Owen see the northern lights in Iceland? Yes, Owen can see the northern lights in Iceland. What is a popular sport in England? Football is very popular in England. Why does Nancy love Madrid? Nancy loves the culture and art in Madrid. Is the euro used in Denmark? No, Denmark uses the Danish kron. What's famous about Amsterdam? Amsterdam is famous for its canals and bicycles. Why is Portugal a popular tourist destination? Portugal is popular for its beaches and historic sites. Where is the nearest metro station? Real-life English conversation. Excuse me, could you please tell me where the nearest metro station is? Oh, sure. The closest one is about a 10-minute walk from here. Are you new to the city? Yes, I just arrived a couple of days ago. I'm still trying to figure out the transportation system. I understand, it can be quite confusing at first. You'll need to head down the street, then take a left at the traffic lights. All right, down this street and then a left at the lights. Got it. Is it a direct line to the city center? Yes, it is. Once you get on the metro, it's only a few stops to the city center. That sounds easy enough. How often do the trains run? 
During the day, they run every 5 to 10 minutes, so you won't have to wait long. Perfect. And how about tickets? Where can I buy them? There's a ticket machine at the station entrance. It's user-friendly and has instructions in several languages. Great! Do you use the metro often? Almost every day. It's fast and convenient, especially during rush hour. It does seem like a practical option. I might use it as my main mode of transport while I'm here. Definitely a good choice. Oh, and there's a mobile app that shows live updates and station maps. It could be really useful for you. That's very helpful. I'll be sure to download it. Thank you so much for your help, Nancy. You're welcome, Oscar. Enjoy your time in the city and feel free to ask if you need more help. Thanks, I will. Have a great day. You too, take care. Discovering the underwater rainbow, an easy English chat about our new aquarium. Hey Rebecca, have you seen the new addition to our living room? It's like we've brought a piece of the tropical ocean home. Oh Robert, I just can't take my eyes off it. The aquarium looks absolutely stunning. How many fish do we have now? There are about 15 fish in there. We've got a mix of neon tetras, guppies, and even a couple of angelfish. Their colors are just mesmerizing. It's incredible. The neon tetras are so vibrant. They look like little swimming jewels. What's your favorite fish Robert? I think the angelfish are quite majestic. Their graceful movements and unique shapes are fascinating. And you Rebecca? Which one do you like the most? I adore the guppies. The patterns on their tails remind me of delicate fans you see in old paintings. Plus, they are so playful. That's true. Did you know that guppies are also known as million fish because of their rapid breeding? No, I didn't. That's a fun fact. We'll need to make sure we can manage that. But what about the plants and decorations in the aquarium? Well, we've chosen a variety of aquatic plants that are not only pretty, but also help keep the water clean for the fish. The little castle decoration is there to provide some hiding spots for the fish. It's like watching a living landscape. Do the fish actually use the castle? They do. Fish often need a place to retreat to feel safe, especially when it's time for them to rest. Speaking of rest, I've noticed some of the fish seem to sleep during the day. Is that normal? Absolutely. Different fish have different sleeping patterns. Some like to rest during the day, while others are more active. How do we feed them? I mean, do all the fish eat the same type of food? Good question. We have a mix of flake food that suits most of the fish, and occasionally, we'll treat them with some brine shrimp. It's important to feed them the right amount. So, not too much and not too little. Got it. This aquarium makes our home feel so peaceful. I'm really glad we decided to get it. Me too, Rebecca. It's a small ecosystem of its own. And it's a great conversation starter for our guests. Absolutely. And it might just be the perfect background for our next YouTube video, don't you think? That's a brilliant idea. An educational video about the ecosystem of an aquarium could really engage our audience. Let's plan it out. Let's do that. It will be fun to share this beauty with everyone. And we can even teach some simple English phrases along the way. <laughs>